I want you to get really excited and make a lot of noise for Femi Ogan's MBE. <laughs> So I wanted to kick things off just to let everybody know a little bit about our guest this evening. So for me, first of all, your accolades are a big wow. It, the list, I had to cut it down because there was so much that I could say. You've been named as UK Film Council Breakthrough Brit in the fields of both acting and writing. You've been named as the top 100 powerful media's power list made from influential figures from African and Caribbean descent. You've been named as one of the most successful actors starring in BAFTA-nominated Prime Suspect, The Good Life featuring Reese Witherspoon, and also Last Chance Henry with Dustin Hoffman. And not only that, yes, there's more, he is the founder of the Identity School of Acting and the Identity Agency Group. And, wait a minute, not only that, he's got those letters, M-B-E. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> when I knew I was interviewing him, I was like, yeah, this is so cool. So... First question, how did you feel when you got that letter that said HRH on it? And they said, uh, Her Royal Highness would like to uh, nominate you to, to receive this honour of MBE. You knew that those were going to be after your name. Well, well it's so funny because, I mean, it was news to me how the whole thing comes about. So apparently somebody has to put your name forward. I don't even know who that person is up to now. Really? It's funny. I really want to just give them the handshake. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it was fantastic. What do you normally do? They send you a letter, and they said, we don't want to tell you what it's about, but we just want to know, and they do tell you what it's about, if you were given some kind of accolade, would you accept it? And the reason why they do that is because if you're going to say no, they're not going to embarrass themselves. Because what normally happens is that people that reject it, they'll go onto the newspapers and show off and say, yeah, I've, I've decided I don't want that title. So that's why they do that. So, But um, I said, you know what, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it because I knew it's going to make my parents proud and everything. So, yeah, it's always good to be yeah, acknowledged for all the hard work you do. Right. So I want to take it way back. We're going to do a bit of a this is your life, if you don't mind. So I want to talk about Femi Ogan's The Actor. What made you want to be an actor? And can you briefly tell me about your journey from just thinking, oh, I want to be an actor to becoming an actor? The funny thing is for me, I just believe when it comes to acting, the difference between those who don't do it as a profession and those who do do it, it's just the fact that some of us want to be paid for doing it. I just think we're all actors in our own rights. Um, from a very, very young age, I was constantly performing at home. It's just a typical story that you hear from everyone. Just performing at home and um, you know, just loving the attentions and all that kind of stuff. So I have to say, um, I really enjoyed it. But I also have to say that if you did bother to look at all the stuff that I'd done on TV, you would see that I'd be smiling a lot. Because uh, I'd done it for the wrong reasons. You need to understand I went to an all-boys school. So I had, n and also had semi-strict parents. So it's one of those situations where I didn't get to interact with women a lot. So what happened was I just couldn't wait. When I was on TV, there'd be a smile on my face because I knew that would just make life so much easier for me if you I just had it girls. out. Yeah, I, I'm, that's it. I'm going to admit the it. Girls. <laughs> right. So when you decided that you wanted to become an actor because you wanted to get the girls, how did you choose what sort of acting roles you wanted to do? You know, I was fortunate enough to be spotted by an agent at a very, very young age. So um, it's, it, just, it just went from there. And it's one of those situations that when you're starting off, well, for me, when I started off, it's just about just doing absolutely everything and anything. And as you start to mature within the industry and understand how it all works and realize that you have a certain level of responsibility to your community, that's when you start making more informed, calculated choices in terms of what you want to do. So um, for the first period, it was just getting myself out there. That's what it was. And then after that, I then became more selective. And what sort of roles did you choose when you got to that more selective phase of your career? You know what? It's, it, for me, when that time came where I could have exercised it to its absolute fullest, I had to make a massive sacrifice. And that sacrifice came in the shape of Identity um, School of Acting. Um, I reached the point in my life where it was either continue with my acting, which was going in a really beautiful direction, or sacrifice it because I felt I, well, I heard this inner voice, which was God, who said to me, Femi, you originally done it for the wrong reasons. Um, now you're starting to enjoy it for the right reasons, but I've called you to do something else, which was to create the Identity School of Acting. So I didn't get to exercise it 
as much as I would have wanted well, to. Well, that actually time. leads me really nicely onto my next question was, at that point in your career, you were really kind of starting to become big time as an agent, but yet you still took the last project that you did, which was the Hollywood movie, The Good Lie, alongside Reese Witherspoon and also our very own Arnold Ocheng. Whoop, whoop. And... Uh, <laughs> big fan of his and at that point you had actors taking up roles all over the world really successful under your guidance but yet you still did that role why you know I'm, I'm a really spiritual person I mean for those who ha have heard of me and have gone onto my Instagram I make no apologies about it I celebrate God and, and, and how God you know operates in our lives um, and for me as I said before I heard this um, this inner voice that told me that, you know what, this is what you need to do. But often, because I, I didn't school of acting has been running for 14 years, and often I would hear people saying, Femi, what about you? Would you ever go back to acting? And I often said to them that the only time I would ever go into acting is if Hollywood knocked on the door. And long and behold, I, I got a call, a random call, um, a couple of years ago that said, Femi, we'd we'll love for you to be in this film, and the director wants to Skype with you. And I was like, how do you know about me? Because I mean, I haven't been doing this for the last six, seven years. And because I put it out there in the atmosphere, not really, you know, feeling I was going to go through with it, I had a decision to make. And that was, you know what, if I put it out there, maybe it's God saying, Femi, you need to do this for whatever reason. Um, and I think I did because I went there and I ended up signing one of the actors from it, which was great. But what it did teach me, what, what it reminded me is that I'm no longer interested in acting. That's not my that thing. That was my next question. Yeah. You're, you're, it's like you're thinking of what I'm going to ask you. I was going to say, is the door actually closed on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not for you anymore. Not for me. <laughs> so that leads me on to the identity acting school. It started back in 2003. What made you decide to open the school and offer your services as a, a teacher and a mentor? Okay, so, I mean, it's a well-known documented fact in mainstream drama schools, they only take on a small proportion of actors from BME backgrounds. So 14 years ago, rather than join the chorus of complaint, I decided to do something about it, because, you know, we, we make up so much noise. Um, so that's when I had to reach that crossroads and decide, do I want to carry on with the acting, or do I want to listen to that inner voice that said, Femi, you know what, you're called upon to do this. And that's when I decided to create Identity School of Acting. Um, it's funny, sitting down, I've got this real backwards kind of mentality in terms of forming your own company. So it wasn't that kind of conv you know, conventional kind of route of great business plan. So you've got to do all these pie charts and all this stuff. I started off with a name. Um, and at that time, 14 years ago, Big Brother was a big massive thing. And I just saw the, I was thinking, what name can I have? What name is going to be able to market itself without me having to market it? So I was looking and I saw the eye of, um, and yeah, I'm not into none of that stuff, by the way. Okay. I saw the eye and, and I said to myself, wait a minute, I, 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 identity, that, that sells itself. So if I can, you know, and so I started with that. I got the logo and then I just took to the streets. So I went to all these different areas, which I knew were highly populated with people from, you know, ethnic, different ethnical backgrounds. Um, Tottenham, Brixton, and I started handing out flyers with my girlfriend at the time. Um, we're not together, unfortunately, you know. But um, but yeah, handing out flyers, and it's so funny. It's just those um, I, I'd done it for months and ends, and only ten people turned up um, to the open day. And it's it's so funny because it's those ten people that invested in the belief. It's their words and their feedback that just let it sprout to what it is right now. So um, yeah. And that's why I've done it. And we've made a massive impact. And now what I'd like to say is that we're no longer, we were, we, we were the, the UK's first ever black drama school. But the, the overall aim, the, the goal was to have a drama school that reflected the world that we live in. And I'm proud enough to say 14 years later, we've got people who are white, black, Asian, Middle Eastern, all working together, nourishing each other you know, with their culture. Let's give that a hand. Did any part of your journey as an actor contribute to your belief that you needed to create this space for actors to come into? Did you have training yourself? Is it something that you kind of struggled with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had training for myself. I went to a full-time drama school. Um, I had a really challenging um, experience there, you know, being the only black person in my year and, you know, the same more typical stories of you know, stereotypes and people thinking, have you got any drugs and all that kind of nonsense or you not been given a chance to exercise and show what you're about. Um, so for me, I wanted to create a safe haven for actors from all backgrounds to be able to celebrate their identity through what they do. 
And that's the beautiful thing, that's a beautiful thing about identity, the fact that it celebrates what already exists. And it's about looking at the rough diamond and just cleaning it up so they can just see exactly how, you know, how much they shine. I know it sounds a bit funny, but, but that's what it's really about. So you said when you started the school, no business plan, just a name. Where did the money come from to get it all going? It came, it came from, yeah, it came from the acting, the acting that I'd done, and I think I only started off. And so I'm, you invested in yourself. I invested in myself, but it was only a couple of hundred pounds at the time. But, um, but yeah. Right. So, did anyone that came through the school decide to take a different path? You know, go into the acting school and end up going Most director, definitely. writer. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we, we've had we had writers, for example, Bola Abaje, um, who went on to write um, the hit play "Gone Too Far" at the Royal Court. Also, Michaela Cole, um, she, she trained there. And for those that know, she's the one who, who wrote and also acted in um, Chewing Gum. So when Identity started, as you said, it was a drama school. At what point did you go, hold on a minute, I want this to be an agency. And when did you make that transition? So we made that transition three years into the drama school. So what was happening up for the first three years, we would nurture and develop this talent. And then we'll start bringing in agents to come and see them. And then we just get these agents that didn't know what to do with them. Um, they just take them and just go, great, we've got them, and then they just throw them at everything. So there's no real formula to what they're doing. So they'll put them for TIE, which is theatre and education at schools. They'll put them up for commercials, then they'll put them up for short films, and they put them up for feature films. Then they'll just have like one word in a feature film. So all the hard work we were doing, we realized that it's just been wasted. Um, so once again, I connected and God said, you know what, Femi, it's time for you to close those doors and you're only gonna op open them up to cast and directors and film production companies, and you are gonna now start to represent the very, very best of the talent there. So yeah, and um, we've been doing it for um, 11 years now, uh, the agency, and I'm proud to say, not because I'm Nigerian, it's a fact, we are one of the leading acting agencies in the UK, and we're absolutely disrupting the industry over in the US, for which we've got 35 of our actors now living and working there. So um, it's beautiful. Amazing. So all right, you can clap whenever he says all this impressive stuff. <laughs> so I had a question that I really wanted to ask you personally, which is in the music industry, there's always an artist that breaks not only themselves, but also their manager or their agent. Do you feel like there was one particular job or, or actor that really kind of put both yourself and identity on the map? Or like a moment, a tangible moment that you would say that was what, that's what broke us? <laughs> You see, it's, it's one of those things, because I've just talked about all the great stuff about identity and what it's done, and, and I cracked a joke about me being Nigerian and not being too proud and all this kind of stuff. But I, I do feel as though identity already had a momentum already um, based on some of the actors that I spoke about. I mean, uh, it's without a shadow of a doubt, the Tobys, the, the Malachis. Um, if you're talking and also about... yourself. Pardon me? And also yourself, because you've done quite a lot yourself. Well, well, you know what, I'll be honest with you, like, the name that the name that's that the only reason I have a name for those people that have heard about it is based on the talent that I represent. Without those guys, then you know I'm still going to be alive. I'm still going to be a king within myself. But it's those guys who helped elevate me. Um, so, but what, what I would say, obviously, John Bayega, who I represent, who also came through the school. Um, for those who don't know, he's the lead, one of the lead in Star Wars, and he's also the lead in Pacific Rim, um, amongst other stuff. Um, he's probably the one that took it global. Um, which is the beautiful thing, because we started that journey together. Um, I took him over to America. Um, I've, I've been looked after him since he's 16 years old, so he's now 25. So it's, um, yeah, I, I tell you, if it, yeah, it's, it's that, it'll be John. John. Yeah. So you recently opened the third branch, can you believe it? It's got three schools already, and that's in Brixton. I wanted to know why you chose Brixton. Because I just think it, it, it spells everything what, uh, about what identity is about. It, it's about just having people from all different walks of life. It's such a wonderful cultural hub. And it was a place that I'm not accustomed to. I haven't been there as much as I would have wanted to. But as I said, I'm just God-driven and wherever God leads me, that's it. And I remember because I originally, I wanted to get another place in East London. And that one fell through um, with the actual building. And I decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna go into work today. I'm gonna be on that internet. I'm gonna find a building that is a D1 use. D1 use basically means for educational use. Um, and I'm not gonna leave this, this spot until, I've, until I, found, I found it. And it's so funny, I was on page 45 of Google, and there it was, like a you whole determined. building. I was determined, and I was like, you know what? Yes, 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 yes. So, and that's why, and we're, we're just so happy, and we're so comfortable, and it just feels like home. 
you going to keep expanding and opening more schools or are you quite happy with the three for now? You know what? I'm quite happy with the three for now. I mean, at the moment, we're just... Um, it's just so busy because, I mean, we've got a base in the US now w w with the agency. So, um, yeah, it's just one step at a time. So we're good for the, for the branches for now. So going back up quite a long time and even probably in some cultures today, the big schools, RADA and Lambda, come up often. What's the difference between identity and schools like that? Okay, the difference is, for one, we are a part-time drama school. So what I strongly believe in is, is allowing actors to be able to experience life, whether it's through work or family interactions or whatever it is. When you go to full-time drama school, you're there for five, maybe six days a week. Um, it could be for like eight to like 12 hours a day. And it's after the third year you get to show your stuff in front of agents. Whereas with the drama school, the part-time drama school, um, you're only required to be there two days a week um, for six hours a week, but it's intensive, um, it's structured, but also you get the opportunity to show what you're about at the end of every year, which comes in the shape of a showcase and a film case. This is stuff that drama schools don't do. Um, um, I mean, it's more money driven that way. We're, we're very, very cost effective. But when we look at even at the creative side, it's about celebrating what already exists. So we're not trying to, which a lot of drama schools do do, strip away your identity and make you a carbon copy of what's already out there. Because what we realize is, is that it's, it's, it's a throwaway. I mean, if, if you're a carbon copy, then that's it. We, we talk about celebrating your own uniqueness. There's nobody else but you. And one thing I often say to people is that I strongly believe that God does not make, mis make any mistakes. So he doesn't make a mistake when it comes to us and who we are. And all we do is just allow the world to conjure up all these insecurities and make us think that we are not good enough. And one thing that identity does is say, you are wonderfully made, like with your flaws and your pros, everything. So that's what's gonna sell. And those people that I've named, that have, that have gone on to do massive things, including Damson there, one thing that they all have in common, they celebrate themselves, they celebrate who they are. And that's why the, the industry are like, oh my God, we have nobody else like you. It's only when, as I said, you allow insecurities to come in, that's when you start comparing yourself. And that's when you start to act rather than live. And the drama school is all about living and breathing. I like that. I bet that, that just inspired me, so I'm sure it inspired you as well. Now, on the note of the drama school and everyone kind of being able to be themselves and have their own identity, there's no age limit. No. No. So you can become a student at any time, which leads me on to ask you, do you think... Well, well you, you have to be over 16. Oh, okay. Oh, that, but there's no upper age limit, so yeah. Yeah. So do you think it's ever too late to become an actor? Never. Yeah, um, you're alive. So if you've got a story to tell, yes, absolutely. So you've worked with so many stars, including, I'm going to hit you off again, Dams and Idris, the next star to break out of your school, John Boyega. I have to say, I'm... I'm extremely extremely we're, we're very very close but i'm so so proud of of damson because he epitomizes everything what the school's about i mean his work ethic is absolutely ridiculous i mean a lot of you guys might recognize him or not recognize him now from all the stuff that he's done in social media like all these comedy s sequences and and all that stuff he had like a ridiculous following but that to me sh showed how much he was thirsty for this and he's willing to work and he himself even realizes all that hard work is paid off because what a lot of actors don't realize, they just think about the fame game, they don't realize all the other stuff that comes with it, about knowing yourself and knowing how to market yourself and knowing when to say no, and knowing that when you do get an opportunity, how to run with it and maximize it. And that's why we've been so close from day one. I mean, even before he's been, he's been doing these big massive things, we had a, such a strong, close connection, and that's because of who he is and what he represents. So I just have to say that, anyway. I was yeah. going to say, what makes people like him and John and Letitia, what makes them special? What makes them stand out from the rest as actors? And you've just answered my question perfectly, I think. So you and John have just finished producing Pacific Ring. Now, I heard in the media, and we all know how reliable those sources are, that you had a large budget, possibly in the region of $300 million to work with. First of all, is that true? Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to check that first. And secondly, what's it like working on a film with such a massive budget? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But it's great because I believe that when you're thrown into the deep end, that's when you really learn to butterfly swim. So um, it's, um, it's, it's been an absolute roller coaster of, of, of a journey. 
as I said, I'm supposed to be there today, but I had to cancel it in order to be here now, so I'll be flying off tomorrow. But for me, it's not honestly because it's what this represents. I, I, I just couldn't miss this. Um, but no, it's, it's wonderful. But, it, but it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just, it's just like you're in a movie, but you are in a movie. And it's just, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just crazy. And it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff that you have to really, really juggle and think about. So as a producer, because you're a producer on the film, what, what does your role entail? Because a lot of people probably don't know exactly what being a producer means. Um, so it's funny because it, with a producer, it's got different disciplines. So it quite it varies in terms of you know what a producer does from film to film. But the responsibility that I have on this film, I was um, very, very... Um, uh, I, I helped a lot with the casting process, which we're still doing at the moment. Um, I also helped in terms of locations, finding the right locations. Also, I was dramateur with quite a few of the, with the scripts, making sure we had to do edits and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's the area that I, that I took care of. That they didn't let me anywhere near the money. So, um, yeah. Oh, damn it. I know. <laughs> You're like, I can see it, but I can't touch oh, it. I can't touch it. <laughs> Final question from me, and then we're going to go to you guys for your questions. So, do get them ready because I'm going to be throwing the mic around in a minute. But I'm sure a lot of you really want to ask this question. As an agent and as a talent spotter, what is the thing that kind of you've got a row of, you say about casting and auditions, you've got a row of people wanting to get into the identity acting school? What is it that makes you go, I want that one? As I said, it's them knowing who they are and celebrating who they are and using all their struggles in life to just to tell the story. Because as the actors, you're a storyteller and that's what it's all about. So it's people owning their struggle, you know, owning their joys. That's what we're looking for. There we go. Right, it's time for you guys to ask your questions. So I'm going to hand this mic over to whoever's going to be doing the sprinting, it's not me and these. Um, and just raise your hand and I'll select the person that's gonna ask the question. Make sure you say your name and your question and stick to one question, don't be greedy. Now that you've obviously, you're established in the industry, can you see a space in the market, like looking backwards thinking, oh, you know, these young people should be taking advantage of this? You know what, I, I have to say that your generation are ridiculous, man. I, I really have to say it. You guys are real entrepreneurs. I started this at the age of 26. And I'm just seeing what you guys are doing at the age of 18, 19, 20. Because, so for me to answer that question, it's me kind of limiting, putting that ceiling above you guys because you are thinking outside of the box. And exactly what you said, look at the gap in the market. That's what motivated me. I'm not, I'm not looking to, to replicate or try and challenge what's already out there. I'm looking to do what nobody else has done. And then once you've got that idea to run with it so far, that if anybody even tries to compete, they've got a long way to go. And when they do get there, you're already on something else. So, um, so yeah, so I've just got to put my hats off to your generation. You're just absolutely killing it. All right, thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks. Um, obviously, you're dealing with a lot of like um, big actors, big names. How do you deal with like conflict? Because obviously, I guess there's, you know, a lot of like testosterone, etc. Like within within your the people that you're you're managing. Um, don't get me wrong. It, it can be very very challenging, but I think it, it takes a degree of patience. Uh, and also understanding and also letting go because um, with the actors that I represent a lot of them I've represented from for a long 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 time So they've seen me as not only their agent, but they've also seen me as their principal um, And even Danton will tell you me and have had some you know some real wrestling matches in the past Which which is great. I'm glad we've had that because it's something to laugh about but you get to form this natural synergy um, And you get to understand them, but the responsibility I have um, not only as their agent, but also having that extra life experience, regardless if they, if they want to take it or not, I'll still give it to them. And it's up to them to decide what they want to do after that. Thanks. Hey everyone. Wow, there's a lot of you. Yeah, I know, from here. Quick question to you in your journey with Femi. What's it been like kind of changing and growing up with him as your principal? and also agent and when you do butt heads how do you kind of manage that situation because i overheard a little thing earlier i'm just gonna <laughs> throw it out here it no, wait, 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 it i overheard a little thing earlier he was like oh i really wish you took that role and he was like oh well you know i have my reason and then they went off and they had this really cool discussion i, I don't didn't hear that but they just like it just looked really intense and really respectful so how do you manage those situations where you have like a difference in opinion on a role oh man well i, I basically i see Femi more than an agent. I see him as 
almost like a big bro. And I know he always has, he, he wants the best for me. So of course you've got to fly, but from the very beginning, it's about setting that tone with the person you're going to work with. I mean, I, he's going to be with me until I'm, this is an ageless industry. But it's, it's, it's amazing because like he said, we've had this relationship from the, the beginning where if you don't know what you, you want to do from the very beginning, and if you don't know that you want to make history, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. If you're in it for fame or if you're in it for, you know, the, the girls, then, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the wrong reasons. But if you're in it to make history, and that's what Femi knows I want to do, then we always come to an understanding in the end, you know? How did you find kind of going into the school and being a part of that sort of environment? It was amazing because I actually, I joined the school a bit late. So um, Malachi, Malachi Letitia was there. There was a bunch of actors, but I remember going in the first day and I was an advanced professional and I didn't know who anyone was. And I, I went home, I was like, oh, mom, yeah, like I had identity today. It was really good. She was like, oh, well done, well done. And then I turned on the TV and Malachi is on TV on a, movie, on a show called My Murder. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, mom, this guy was at the school still training. So from looking at people like him, looking at people like Toby, I realized that training was always important no matter how far you get, uh, no matter how many fans you gather along the way, you always need to train, you always need to go back and continue to learn, and continue to grow and continue to live. I went to, I was in the same class as Damson when we first started Identity. And one thing what I just want to um, respect you for is because one thing I always remember about Damson was he was never afraid to fail. Like any time a teacher would tell somebody to come up, everybody would be looking around and Damson was always the first one to be like, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. He would always put his hand up first. He was never afraid to make a mistake. And just from when I saw him, I always saw like he was, he was so hungry. So, you know, just a lot of respect for you to see how far you've come. And, you know, you inspired me and you inspired a lot of people from my God bless so, you, God man. You. God bless you and I'll see you on set soon, my boy. I have a question. I mean, we've spoken about Damson. Hi, Damson. <laughs> um, about, you know, his drive and his commitment in class, like his um, mates just mentioned. So for you, Femi, what indicators do you look for in actors to say, do you know what, they're ready or they're on their way to, you know, being ready and maybe I'm ready to take them on, you know, in my agency? Because he thinks, I mean, it feels like I'm an auto repeat. Um, but it is them knowing who they are. Um, there's nothing worse than seeing somebody sounding so scripted. Um, you know, you know exactly where the full stops are, you know exactly when the next par paragraph starts. So it's, it's those people, because I strongly believe that a character is two things. A character that, wh whatever character you play, it has to be an extension of yourself. But also, it has to be the situation that you now find yourself in. And that's the reason why actors can jump from one job to another, um, because they realize that, it, and it's so easy for them. Why? because they realize that a character is an extension of themselves and also is a situation that they find themselves in. And when an actor gets to that point, when they realize that you're enough and we're, we're dealing with you in this present moment, that's when you can't put anything on it. That's when it's breathtaking, that's when it's special. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. Those people that realize that acting is just living. When they do that, boom, it, it, it's over for me. Thank you. Um, yeah, my question's for Femi. Um, I, what I like hearing about what you're saying is how much God is involved with what you do, like your spiritual side. I'm a Christian as well. Um, the question I want to ask you, though, is have you had any situations or experiences in your career, either acting or as an agent, um, where your spirituality kind of didn't go with the industry? Absolutely. Absolutely. And how did you deal with it? I, I have every day. I have every day. And, and this is one of those ones where I, I, I have to confess, and it was really unfair of me at the time, um, because the actor didn't know, but there's a play called The Book of Mormon, um, and I, I didn't want none of my actors going up for that. And, and, and they came for quite a few of them, and I was like, Ugh. But then I realized that that's not my responsibility. Uh, my responsibility is to speak to the actor um, and voice my opinion. Um, but everybody's got their challenges, everybody's got their journey. And for me to try and control the journey of others, I think it's very, very unfair. So I would definitely put my, my point across and I'll leave it up to them um, to make that decision. But every day, um, um, you're constantly challenged. Hello, my name is Nii Akin, I'm an actor myself. And uh, the question I have is for both of you. Um, when, obviously, an actor 
is um, uh, has landed a roar and it's going very well. The ball's rolling, and then suddenly it just stops. How do you work? How have you like worked around that? Like the hard times when maybe eight months or maybe a year, nothing has come. You live, man. You really do live. I remember um, at Femi said I was doing. I I was always good at booking plays. I remember I always used to do plays, but not all the time is there a good play out there. So you can't really do a play anymore. And at the same time, I was doing my comedy videos. And then I remember one day I was like, Femi, I'm gonna delete all these videos. I've got all these, this following, I'm gonna delete it. And he was like, no, are you crazy? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna delete it. What were you talking about? You didn't want me to, you you didn't want me to delete it. Why are you gonna lie in front of all these people? Oh, Femi told Femi told me to delete it, and then it was deleted, <laughs> and then I basically went on holiday. You know, I went to Nigeria. I, I spent time with my family. I lived. You know, um, I met a lady. You know, and then, <laughs> and then auditions started rolling in, and I was walking in with a different mentality. I wasn't walking in thinking, if I don't get this, my life is over. I almost. I hate to say it, almost didn't care. It it sounds weird, but a lot of actors, when you're young, you know, you're so eager and you're so insecure and that creates nerves, but you don't want to be nervous. You want to be confident. And one thing Femi told me is through living, when you walk into these auditions, you make them believe that you're a superstar and they can see it. No one wants to work with someone that they don't get along with. No one wants to work with someone that's nervous because they're putting all this money on you. So you need to go in there with your, I mean, <laughs> I remember, so Snowfall, I remember I auditioned, sent a tape, and then I, they flew me to um, LA. I flew there on my own dime the first time, and then they were like, okay, we need you to come back again. So I went back to London, I was doing a film, came back again, and I was like auditioning, and it was a chemistry test with um, Lauren London. I mean, God, Lauren London. This is a girl who, like, I used to sit on YouTube for hours looking at her. So I'm in the room of Lauren London and I'm nervous. I'm really, really nervous. And it shows. And then they called me and they said, you know what? I'm sorry, Damson, but the role's not going to you. And I was like, oh man, I flew in all the way to LA. Let me just quickly go in and out, get a burger and go back to London. And then I get on my knees, I pray, I say, God, thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for getting me this far. They call me back, they say, you know what? We want you to come back in. We want to give you another chance. The showrunner, Dave Andron, calls me, forgive my French, and he says, we noticed that you was very, very nervous. Next time you come in, just come in with your balls hanging. And I went in and I was like, I was in American House. I was like, hey, what's good? Y'all good? Yeah, what's up? Hey, let me, hey, roll that camera right there. Yeah, I was just running with it. And I got the role. Do you know what I mean? So you cannot be nervous. And during the down times, that's when you realize I need to be a superstar if I want to get far because that's what they're looking for. Mm. It's not arrogance. It's not arrogance. It's, it's knowing what you want. Hello, my name is Benjamin Sarpong. I'm, too, I'm also an actor. Um, and I haven't got a question. It's more of a comment. Um, um, basically, I want to commend you, especially Damson. Um, or you, you also you too, Femi, for... Um, inspiring greatness. Because I remember when I was younger, I just wanted to muck around, be a class clown, did acting a bit. I could go on a stage with confidence, had that stage confidence. But it was after watching that, I think it was the monologue you did with Sebastian Till, where I was like, yo, that's greatness. Do you know what I mean? I don't just want to do this, I want to be as good as that. Do you know what I mean? So it inspired me to work hard, and I think you two, Femi, are, is an, you're both an example of greatness. So thank you, guys. God bless you, man. Thank you. So I've got a question for both of you, and you've kind of touched upon it before in terms of your personal journey. And I'd like to know how you've changed as a person and how that's affected you in your professional capacity as well. I've stopped caring as much now um, about the little things, and it kind of goes in line with the question that the gentleman asked a second ago in terms of the quiet periods. Um, you know, I, I really welcome God into my life. And that's not to say that I don't make mistakes and, you know, and, and I don't end up regretting them. But I've realized that there's more to life than just what we want. 
um, because God gives us what we need and he, he, he fights those battles that we will never, ever be able to deal with if we didn't see them. And when you start to align yourself with, with, a, with the higher power, you realize that you've got a, a degree of responsibility that is far beyond. Um, and when I started to realize that, that's when that maternal side of me started to come out even much more. And I was able to attract more and more people um, and also be able to break down so many different doors. Um, it's with that belief that I was able to go to LA um, X amount of years with a young boy called John Bayega. Sat down, sat around a table with like 16 agents in CAA. Um, 16 people, I say 17 because I know that I took John with me and I know John was looking at me with one eye thinking, okay, let's see what this guy's about. And knowing that you have to win the room. And that confidence that I had back then, um, don't get me wrong, it's, it slowly fades with age or whatever it was, but that was through understanding where it's all coming from. And that's why for me personally, anything that I've put my mind to, I've always achieved, always. There's nothing in this world that I haven't been able to make possible for myself that I've wanted to. Um, and that's why I try and encourage everybody to realize that we are all kings, regardless of color, whatever it is, we are all kings in our own right. And we shouldn't allow this world to allow us to, you know, question our ability. Because, you know, from 10 people, we've now got a school of over 900 students training every single week. And that in itself has opened up a whole, you know, a whole section of opportunities or whatever it is. So for me, as time goes on, if your focus is on God, everything just rains down from there. Beautiful. Hi, this is for um, Femi and Damson. So I'm a boxer and I commend, uh, commit an immense amount of time, energy and emotion to my sport. And I wanted to know that with acting, is it a thing where you literally have to do the same thing and you can't sort of juggle different uh, hobbies or different activities? Or is it a kind of thing where you can do both and really devote a lot of time and energy to two or three different things while doing acting? Yeah. Um, do you want to be an actor? Uh, I mean, I double, you know what I mean? I, I, I like it. I'm not going to lie. But do you know what? I've got, I've got a lot of respect for acting and um, I don't want to disrespect it by thinking I can dip one foot in and then fuck off again. Do you know what I mean? Is, is, um, so you're, you're passionate about boxing. I think seek boxing stories. There's so many. And that could almost be your, your first play time, really, and really dabble in it. There's so many actors who, I mean, Toss was just doing it now, you know, there's so many actors who wish to, <laughs> that's why you were horrible at boxing in that short. But, <laughs> but there's so many, you know, you've got Mike B who did Creed, you know, you've got so many examples. I think that would be a great in for you. Um, to answer your question though, I think you can, I think you can devote your time to boxing and devote your time to acting because whatever you put your heart to, you can accomplish. I know people who act, do music, write, direct, do all these things and still play football, you know? So you could definitely do it. Just put your mind to it. Thanks very much. And, and for me, like acting is your laboratory to be able to be as creative as possible and just to throw your whole life experience. So if your life experience is boxing or whatever it is, you're throwing some of those disciplines into it. Is that Sebastian up there? Um, now, sorry, can I just get Sebastian to stand up? Because Sebastian, is actually responsible for 98% of our actors getting signed in the US. Um, and, and so Sebastian Till, um, who I also represent um, uh, the, you know, as, as a writer slash director, he's honestly responsible for 98% of our actors getting signed in the US um, because of the rules that he does. He's got a ridiculous um, directing style that brings out the real essence of what actors are about. I did say to him though, that when he does do any rules for anybody, not to do the same formula as our one, but he's the one that they mentioned about Damson's, um, Damson's monologue. He just, he just takes it to another level. So uh, I just have to commend him and I'm absolutely blessed to have him in my life. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Jordan. Um, I go to identity school and um, I have a question for both of you. Um, I was wondering from Damson, as an actor, how do you prepare for your roles? <laughs> when I go on YouTube, like I've, I've researched like how actors prepare for their roles, 
but like I'm, I've been looking at like um, already made it actors, for example, Denzel Washington, and I'm like, I just can't find nothing on it. So I was just wondering, personally, as someone who actually acts. So why are you going to drama school? What do you mean? Why would you why would you talk about going on YouTube no, 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 to look at no, how no, to no, become no. an actor? No, no, not how to become one, but it's like how so to prepare I, for an actor so and being an actor. I think he means outside of class time, like how could you prepare? Um, so everything that you've learned in class, what could it enhance his um skill or our skill? Could we both go? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, drama school definitely has a huge impact. But yeah, I think whatever you, whatever tools you can grab, YouTube being one of it, we live in a different age now, you know. And and for me, when I approach a role, I'm mostly inspired. So I look at Daniel Day Lewis. I think, oh, why does everyone say he's the greatest actor? I look at Matthew McConaughey. Why did he win that Oscar? I look at Denzel, and then I look at what they do when they play those characters, and it's mostly transformation. It's them pushing themselves to the highest level, you know. If if you're playing a character who's who's HIV positive, you know, you can't just show up to work looking how you look. You need to lose the weight. And me, for instance, now I'm playing a 16 year old. I'm 26. You know, I can't I can't be muscly Damson that I was before or what I was in Snowfall. I'm in the gym every single second. I'm eating. Yesterday I had Weetabix and an apple, like. When you do this stuff, you just fall, everything else kind of just falls into place for you. Like, because you know you've dedicated yourself to that. So you could dedicate yourself to anything else. So if you're on screen, like if you, let's say you're, you're just about to go on screen, like literally just before you go on screen, mm. how would you prepare, like get yourself into character? That's, what I, that's basically the question I was asking. Oh, well, you need to find your rituals. You know, I, I, when I walk onto a set, I touch everything because I want to feel like I've been there before. Um, if I'm playing a character that isn't British, I'm, I talk American all day. You know, I look in the mirror and I say I'm the best actor in the world three times. I've done that in every single role I've done. All the way from the first theater play, Pandora's Box in our Cola Theatre, when I was sitting in my little room, I looked in the mirror and I said, I'm the best actor in the world, I'm the best actor in the world, I'm the best actor in the world. And then when I went out there, I was confident. Just find your rituals, man, and you'll be able to do it. Thank you. My name is Shakira and I work in post-production as a runner. I just have one question for you. What keeps you going? You see, you've heard it a thousand times, God. Personally, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's all, that's the question I had for you. And that's your answer. <laughs> um, sorry, I just got the mic and I thought I'd ask something a bit random. Um, What's your favorite meals, both of you? Bam. Acting related. Yeah, so random, but like, I'm guessing you travel to LA, you travel to a bunch of different places. Like, what is the thing that you crave the most? And this is to get you, get to know you personally on a personal level, just something random and different. Yes. Um, I've just, bird, have you, have you tasted bird before? That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's the waffles and it's got chicken and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, but bird is better than, yeah. <laughs> Mine's mum's cooking, man, to the end, you know. When I'm away, that's the, the one thing I wish I had with me. Um, specifically, Ebba with goat meat and okra. That's the one, yeah. Hi, I'm Claudia. Um, I just wanted to ask, would you say that actors that turn up to your school with uh, previous experience or um, actors who just maybe have always known they wanted to get into acting and kind of just improvise from that, would you say either or has an advantage or um, in your experience has it worked out that, you know, the talent does the speaking as opposed to experience? The funny thing is, um, it, it just happens that the majority of people that end up doing very, very well at the school have had nothing but life experience. So yeah, no, no matter what training you've had before, we put that to one side, we don't even ask. It's just about, you know, you bring yourself to the, you know, to the forum.